Good day friends. My name is Venkatrangan Thirumalai. I am a Microsoft Regional Director. A honorary title I have been holding for the last 20 years. In the next 20-25 minutes now, I am going to be talking about how you can develop low code apps with Microsoft Power Apps platform. And then we will see how you can use Azure AI platform with the AI builder in Power Apps. You can follow me at Venkatrangan in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Now, why low-code platform? This is a topic that's very passionate. A couple of weeks back, I talked about the future of software development by 2040, where one of the emphasis I was making and the key prediction I was making by 2040 is going to be the rise of no-code platforms. As a curtain riser to that, today we have low-code platforms like Power Apps. We'll also see we are in the middle of, middle of a pandemic. So why these low-code platforms are very important today? Then I will convince you, the professional developer, why you should care about Power Apps. We will then see what is Power Apps and then we will see what is AA Builder, how you can use the Azure AA platform with the AA Builder and then we will see some demos. Why I am so excited about low-code platform is low-code platforms are told to have about 15% growth in the next year and then this number is going to keep on increasing. And that makes this platform really exciting. But in the, if you can imagine in the next three, four years, the amount of developers going to be using low code platform is going to be high. When I say low code, it is not no code. That's a different uh, thing altogether. This is low code platform. Now, why you should care about this in a pandemic? And this picture you've seen is from Times Square in the month of March, April, when there was lockdown in New York. And this is one retail chain, a large retail chain in the US. They had locked down pretty much in New York and all the other big cities. But then some of the suburban stores were open. They were also starting to sell a lot on virtual. Now, those stores that closed, those people were on bench, but the company actually wanted to take care of them. But then the virtual sales was also increasing and they need people to do delivery or they need people to man other stores when people get sick here. But then the company didn't have a company-wide roster. Even the job roster that they have, it was only available for each set of employees for that store manager. But they wanted a company-wide thing that managers across different stores could actually look. So what happened, this manager in one of the stores quickly got this job roster data within their organization, used a connector and picked it up in Power Apps and wrote an app just in a single day. That allowed any manager in any store to actually look up employees from other stores who were on bench and put them on time schedules, put them into slots that are available. And this way the company was able to actually utilize most of their employees either in the virtual store or in the nearby stores very effectively. And uh, if you can, if you could have guessed, the company was T-Mobile and there is a case study in the Microsoft website on how this company actually utilized this low-code platform to actually empower their managers during this pandemic. And that's a pretty good example on how you can use on low-code. Another company, this is a logistics company, Bolur, one of the 500 largest companies in the world. They have about 84,000 employees and they wanted to develop an application quickly that can scan their containers and pick up the information without people typing it. So as you can see on the right hand side by just taking a photograph and uh, this uh, the Power Apps application with AI Builder was actually able to determine the shape of the, uh, the container, the model, the number, and where it came, so on and so forth, all from that information available. And this was able to be stored in rest of their workflow in the application. So there's a lot of use for these low code platforms. And here is an example of Naz. She is a front end claims officer who manages insurance claims. And she wanted to speed up or productive increase her productivity for a job process she was doing. Probably it's not uh, same job process that everybody else in the organization was doing. So she wanted to develop. So she got her IT to provision her on a Power Apps platform and she was able to write this application with no code. And that she again used Power Apps. Uh, if you thought only citizen developers like NAS was using Power Apps, you should change your opinion. In this case, Nathan, a professional uh, application wizard, a programmer, he has written for years applications. He was able to use Power Apps and use tools like AI Builder to write sophisticated application that he uses. And also he makes citizen developers in the rest of the organization could actually use. If I convinced you or picked up your interest that Power Apps is a useful platform, 
why you should look at it. You are already a C sharp developer or a SharePoint developer. Why you should look at Power Apps? I just did a search yesterday and Nokri showed about 26,000 applications that are available for Power Apps as a keyword. And these are application job roles from application developer onto application lead across organizations. Uh, organizations as large as Accenture to Virtusar to smaller companies are hiring Power Apps. Uh, thing lots and lots of applications especially lots of digital transformation applications are being written in power apps not only uh, job roles if you go to upwork you see again lots of freelancers were working on power apps i was able to pick up scores of job uh, uh, people freelancers who are available for uh, power apps so if this convinced you that power apps is for a professional developer stay with me for the rest of the talk what you can do with power apps let me uh, talk about the detail a little bit later but with power apps you can develop web and mobile application basically the entire spectrum and uh, the elephant in the room let's get it out power apps is not about coding it's not your xamarin replacement so if you write an application for a consumer you want to have, have a startup you want to write a native application on ios or android or um, mac or windows then you should look at xamarin so where you can use c sharp and dot net to write cross-platform application that you use xamarin if you again want to have cross-platform application you can use dot net core and uh, power apps again is not visual basic though it looks like a drag and drop it's not visual basic it's more a low code platform where a lot of components can actually plug in and the easiest way i have found out to think about power apps is to think of microsoft access for the cloud era those of us who are old enough to have used access lots of industry solutions were actually written in Microsoft Access and that if you take it to cloud today, that's an easiest way of you thinking about Power Apps. About five, six years back for a large US financial services company in my organizations, we were migrating them from Lotus Notes onto SharePoint. This was about like 4,000, 5,000 employees and pretty much about uh, 3,000 or 4,000 uh, applications or databases that were available on Lotus Notes that we had to migrate to SharePoint. It was a multi-year project. One of the biggest difficulties we faced was the data we were able to bring in into SharePoint list, the permissions, all this we were able to use a migration tool and bring pretty much. But some of those low code applications, kind of the uh, P2P personal applications that people have written in Lotus Notes, that when we bring it to Lotus, uh, SharePoint, even with the migrator, we found it pretty difficult. If something like Power Apps was available that like five, six years back, we could have written those functionalities in Lotus Notes a lot more easier in Power Apps. And that's the kind of thing that people are using within organization for themselves, business people. That's where Power Apps really excels. An example for you to think uh, better, Power Apps, you can actually mix with your other app development platform. What you have seen on this is a very familiar food de development, uh, food delivery service we all have used during this pandemic and before. The front end application that you see on the left hand side, that you develop something like with your Xamarin or on your iOS platform or Android platform, that you do native development, where you connect with the, uh, where you show the data to the consumer and get the order and all that. But on the right hand side, when the food delivery is done, nowadays these delivery persons actually take a photograph of your food delivery because they do no contact delivery. They take a photograph as a proof. That is not a consumer application that only your employees or the delivery people are going to be using. So that you can actually think of using Power Apps. You provision for all your people at Power Apps and deploy this application quickly because you might want to change the functionality on this app. Because in the lockdown, you know, every day the lockdown rules changed. So that you cannot keep developing an iOS, put it on the app store and the, go through the whole process. You want the application quickly de deployed, but you also want it to be offline. That's where Power Apps really excels. You can develop it and when they launch Power Apps, the next time this application actually gets downloaded onto their platform and you can do a lot of offline mechanisms uh, for that. There, the person can actually take a photograph and then do it. That's so you kind of mix and match. The consumer application is on Xamarin, the employee application you develop with, Power Apps. What is Power Apps? You have seen all this. Power Apps basically is a platform, a SaaS platform. It's part of the Office 365 subscription. And uh, there's a lot of components. BI, Power BI is your analytics. Power Apps is the app development, which we'll see. Automate is your, what used to be called as Microsoft Flow. And then you have virtual agents for chatbots. You have data connectors, you have AA builder and Dataverse. Dataverse was area earlier called as common data services. Microsoft is pretty good in renaming their platforms pretty often. So flow became automate, common data services became Dataverse and all that uh, 
thing. So in this talk, we'll only see power apps and AA builder. There are a lot of connectors. Any application is useless if it doesn't connect to data. Power apps actually give you ready-made data connectors to connect to Microsoft services and also lots and lots of third party from Google Drive to Box to Salesforce. You name it, there is a data connector. About 350 data connectors are already available. Using something like Power Automate, you can actually pick up a data from SharePoint, write it to Box, from Box take it, put it to Google Drive, process something and then take it to Excel. You can do all these interesting things with Power Automate. If you're a pro developer, you can again use Power Apps to develop components and then you can consume it or you can actually give it to your citizen developers for using it in Power Apps. How you develop those if you're a pro developer, you use your standard thing that you're already familiar in the Microsoft ecosystem, your Visual Studio or Code, and you will develop your compute on Azure functions or Kubernetes, and then you will also consume data in any of the Azure data services that are available. You can also write your own UI. You want to extend the components. We'll see the components that are available in Power Apps, but if you want to extend them, you can use your skills on TypeScript or React. And then you can also follow your standard CI/CD pipeline. You can, whether it is GitHub Actions or whatever you're already following, you can follow all that in to develop Power App controls. Now let's switch gears and see how you can set up Power Apps and then see some quick uh, two, three demos. Let's switch. Okay, here is a Power Apps thing. I've actually provisioned myself. It takes a bit of uh, time to provision. As you can see, I'm in the uh, pr uh, trial environment. I'll tell you how you can get a trial environment. The best if you're learning Power App platform is to start with a trial. And then once you're comfortable, you can actually provision it to be your paid uh, platform. So what we'll do, you can either start in the data connection and start building an app, or you can actually go from the apps uh, area. Let me just show you what is here in the connections. These are some connections that I've already connected. I've connected a WordPress and authenticated. I've connected to my blog with RSS. I've connected to my OneDrive account. I've connected to my Outlook and some of the other things. In this case, let me start with the apps. I will actually go and create a new app. I can create a Canvas app. That's what I'll start. I'll create a develop, uh, what do you call, uh, a tablet app. So I'll name it welcome. So it's going to provision an application for me. It's going to take a bit of time. In this case, I'm actually provisioned it in US Power Apps uh, environment so that I can actually get AA Builder uh, available for me. But if you're provisioning it on India, it, it's going to launch pretty fast uh, for you. So here is a canvas, pretty familiar to all of us, uh, where you can drag and drop uh, components uh, available. You can actually add text label, pretty familiar to us in any other uh, development platform. I want to actually pick up a, a reader for my blog. I write a lot of blog posts at venkatrangan.com. In this case, I'm actually showing something in WordPress, venkatrangan.wordpress.com, where I've written a blog post, uh, this article. Okay, I'll tell you why I'm picking up because I know the product ID for this. So I'll go back here to the canvas. I'm, I just want to read this title and this HTML content. So let me develop a quick app for that. So let me drag and drop a text label. Okay, and then I'll drag and drop a HTML field. Okay, so this is an HTML field. So I've got these two fields now, a label and an HTML thing. I need to connect with the data from WordPress. So what I'm going to be doing is doing the connector that I showed you. Here is WordPress. I'm going to be adding that. I've already authenticated, so there's no need for me to authenticate. It's bring it up, so it's available. Now, this thing can actually read data from my blog. I'm going to go to this text label. If you're familiar with uh, formulas in uh, Excel, I'm going to be doing pretty much in the text property. I'm going to be typing WordPress dot get post. You're going to see IntelliSense. And it's going to ask me the site ID, which I know very well. So it's venkatrangan.wordpress.com com and I know the post ID that's why I told you that particular post earlier and I want to read the title there are multiple properties I'm going to read the title so if you see it's now picked up free book by Anderson I'm going to do a similar thing for the HTML field I'm going to the HTML field in the data section I'm going to be typing the same thing WordPress that's the connector get post that's the pro uh, function and I'm going to give the site ID venkatrangan.wordpress.com. There are good documentation available in Microsoft.com for this if you want to uh, do this yourself. And then I'll say in this case, content. Okay. 
you can also do excerpt you can do many other things but i'm going to say content and then i'm done so if i play this you can actually see i've got a simple html reader here which can actually read the content from my post and then bring it here a title and this is an html reader so it's extremely easy now i can publish this to anybody else to use this so that's how easy it is for me to do a thing let me show you another application in this thing was developed from a template uh, which is you can go to new app and then say it's a, a, a canvas application and then you can actually choose there are multiple things available from a template you can choose the one that you want in this case it's a cost estimator so I've already developed this it's as easy as giving it a name and then provisioning it so we'll see this working the pre uh, developed it's just a matter of minutes you can develop this application in this case I've actually entered a name called Rajesh and Rajesh is actually going to a customer for home improvement. He wants to go to a customer and he wants to do a new flooring or something. So begin estimate. What is the room? It's a hall. It's about 5 feet by 20 feet. Okay, 100 square feet. What is the flooring? I want to have a vinyl flooring. I choose it. And then I can actually go ahead and add a photograph. Switch on the camera and add a photograph. And then I can do, I can sign okay like submit this data actually is going to go and sit in my OneDrive for business uh, storage if I go to my uh, OneDrive I can actually check it out so let me go to OneDrive for business you can actually see this entire data actually comes from this Excel file here for this application the cost estimator uh, application you will see that is this data that's where all the floor the jobs all the data actually comes the rooms everything so all this comes here and the images that you actually take including the signatures actually get stored here so what we have done is this is a power apps application that we have developed uh, from a template without any coding that's able to take a data from a mobile app and then store it in OneDrive. extremely easy to do a lot of people also use power apps as a front end for dynamics for you to do better ui than what dynamics allows you to do in this case let's see for an lcd monitor i want to visualize see it's a dynamics 365 site where i've got all the data from the dynamics crm but i've actually had a better looking ui developed in power apps there's a lot of things you can do you can actually share run a report and all that so let's get back to the thing so we saw four things we saw how you can uh, we didn't actually see the uh, setup process but then i talked to you about it then wordpress connector a cost estimate where you're able to go to a uh, house renovation and take a photograph do an estimate and then we also saw how you can write front ends for dynamics in fact a lot of companies or even large consulting companies are actually using power apps to write front end for uh, dynamics quickly we'll switch gears we'll go to the a builder part a builder is for those people who are not familiar with AI, who are not a data scientist but still want to do AI. It could be for professional developers also for you to get familiar with AI or you want to write something quick and then take it in your rest of the other applications that you actually want to use. You can actually look at AI Builder. It's on top of the same Azure AI infrastructure so you get all the power and scalability of Azure AI. There are four scenarios in which you can use AI. Uh, Azure AI, AI Builder for document processing, vision processing, prediction, business predictions and then language processing. We will see them in a little detail. There are two things as pre-built models and then custom models. Pre-built models are those models that Microsoft has taken and then trained them on data. So you for example you want to do a text translation. You need lots and lots of text corpus which you may not have. Microsoft has it and they have trained it. That's a pre-built AI model which you can just consume either in Power App, Power Apps or Power Automate. A custom AI model is specific to your business data, your corporate data that you don't want to give it to or share it to anybody else. So you can take a custom model and then train with your own data. We will see an example and then you can start using them. There are five custom models that you can actually use. One is to do business predictions with historic data, what's been the outcome. You do that and train the model and then you can look at how it works on a future uh, data you give a future data that's coming based on the historic data you can actually see what's going to be the outcome in the future that is prediction form processing you can take a photograph or a pdf and then process it with extract information like invoice receipt so on and so forth there is object detection you can take a photograph or a video thing extract an image and then look at what are the objects that we'll again see a demo of that there is entity extraction which you can do and then you can text classification Pre-built AI models that Microsoft gives 
like invoice processing, receipt processing, sentiment analysis and text uh, recognition, text translation. These are models that Microsoft actually has trained. So you don't need to train them. You can straight away use them. We'll see some three demos. We'll start with sentiment analysis. Okay, sentiment analysis. So here is a demo that I've already developed with sentiment analysis. I'll show you how I came here. Uh, I'm going to go to Power Apps A Builder. This is where you need to provision this if you don't already have it in your tenant. This is a separate add-on in your subscription. But if you're on the uh, trial thing, even then you'll have to provision. It takes a bit of time and you can only provision it in the US uh, data center for now. It's coming to India a little later. But currently, if you want to try A Builder, you have to provision it in India data center. So I've already provisioned and uh, there are models you can actually build or models that are already I have built in this case. Okay, so let me go to build and uh, you will see the custom models. These are the five custom models that you will have to train with your data. These are pre-built models that you don't need to train that you can actually use. I've used the sentiment analysis and I have used text recognition which I'll show you in a minute. I've just clicked them and created an application out of them. It, you want to use an app or a thing and then you give an app name and do the same workflow that we saw earlier. That's how I start doing that. So I've already built it here. So an app where I extracted data from my blog and each of there is a blog title, blog text. It says whether it is positive or social media like you can guess is a negative sentiment. This text, so you can use it for your social media or Twitter. Lots of comments are coming in. You want to tell your management whether it is negative or positive or your support calls. You can actually use this uh, feature to say what is the sentiment. There are the TV review I've written is mixed and all that. In this case, I haven't used the WordPress plugin that I showed you, the WordPress connector. I've actually used an RSS connector where I've gone here uh, and you will see I have also used an RSS connector. So I've used this to read my blog as an RSS just to show you a different way of doing things. And I've then given it to this sentiment analysis and got this result. Let's switch and see text processing. I'm going to be uploading an image. In this case, I have already have an image, an English uh, thing that I've taken from a newspaper. It's going to go to the text recognizer. That's a pre-built AI model that Microsoft has got and it's able to recognize with irritating marketing calls, with irritating marketing calls. We want to go to Mount Everest. All of us are senior citizens. It's able to recognize it beautifully. You can extract all the text also. In this case, it's just labeling each one of them. And uh, you can actually see the properties. If you go, it, it can tell you how confident it is, what is the accuracy and all that thing. But a simple application that I've been able to develop with a pre-trained model. Okay, let's... So we have seen sentiment text. Let's look at food classifier next. So I'll show you the application and then I'll tell you how I developed it. So I'm going to be uploading a picture. I'll show you the, okay. I'll, I'll upload a picture of a rasam or a puppet and see how things go. Okay, I've got some test data here. I'm uploading an image of a rasam. Rasam is becoming very popular now with COVID for immunity, especially in South. So uh, uh, we have had plenty of varieties of rasam in this um, uh, seven eight months so it's able to tell it's a rasam so i can actually try with a puppet hopefully it should say it's a puppet okay so yes it's a puppet let me fool the system or let me try with a budgie and see whether it's able to determine it's a budgie it's not able to why? Because I have only trained it on Rasam and Puppet. I will tell you how I have done that. You will understand that. Okay, let me actually go here. I will tell you how I am training this system for Rasam and Puppet. I am going to build a model. This is a custom model where the sentiment and text was a pre-trained model. This is a custom model. So I will have to give it data. So if you see here, I have got lots of data of training data here of puppets and rasams. So I've got about 16 images of puppets, various shapes and size. And I've got some 19 images of rasam. Some I've taken some from the internet. So I'm going to be using this image to train my model. So I'm going to be choosing object. I'm going to tell food sample one. This is a custom model that I'm taking and then provisioning it. 
I have to now tell what is the food items I'm going to be wanted to be classifying. Okay, so it's very easy. There is no code here. You will see how easy it is to do an AI application without any code. So we want to determine Rasam. These two are the food objects that we want to name Puppet. I'll have to upload images, the training images. So I'll have to upload. I'll just upload one just to show you how it is. I'll go to the training data. I'll upload a Puppet image. Okay. I'll have to do tagging so that the system knows this is a Puppet. It doesn't know whether it's a puppet or a uh, rasam now. So I'll have to go choose this and then do something called as tagging. I'll say this is a puppet. Okay, I'm done tagging. Like this, I'll have to do about 30, 15 for puppet and 15 for rasam and train. It's going to take time. I'm not going to be doing that, but you got the idea of you uploading images and then tagging. You will have to do this manually. So if you have hundreds of images, it actually the accuracy of the model actually becomes a lot better. You can automate this also using Power Automate, but in this case, it's only manual. So let me choose the model that I've already trained here. So the model is already trained here. I'll do a quick text of this model. I'll upload from my uh, testing. Training I shouldn't be doing because the system has already seen it. So I, I want an image which the system hasn't seen. So let me choose another puppet. Image doesn't need. So let me upload something else. So let me upload this rasam and see what's happening okay so it says 65 percent it's sure it's a rasam let's try with the dosa dosa i haven't shown it in the training data but let's see what happens the system is going and doing 41 percent it's puppet so it's for less than 50 percent but it's actually dosa and i only trained with 15 puppets if i have more, say 100 puppets that i've trained it's not going to say uh, between any of this uh, two. So that's how you can actually improve more of this efficiency. So we have actually seen uh, sentiment analysis, we have seen text extraction, we have seen sentiment, we have seen text extraction, we have also seen food uh, food detection in, in the model and then consumed the model. So that's how easy it is for you to use a builder in Power Apps. There are lots of applications coming in Power Apps because it's a SaaS platform. Microsoft keeps improving this ever. A couple of uh, weeks back, they introduced the support for Teams. So you can develop Power Apps and then bring it in Teams. All of us are spending more time on Teams. So you can develop apps in Power Apps, either personal apps or for a team-wise apps you can build and then call it in Teams. There is also mixed reality. So with if you have HoloLens or even without HoloLens, you can actually go, even in this house renovation example, you can actually go to a customer, give them an HoloLens and they can see their floor and then you can put vinyl, wooden and all that and see what happens on top of the actual thing, mixed reality. Or in a mobile app, you can actually bring this mixed reality thing. Microsoft has trained uh, uh, this for bringing these objects. So it need not be only those fancy things that we do on our camera, bringing cats, Star Wars characters and all that. It can actually be useful for a business application. So. In the last few minutes, if I've convinced you Power Apps is an interesting platform that you have to spend your time, you can learn it just in one and a half hours. Go to this uh, URL aka.ms slash D365 Fundamentals LP, D365 Fundamentals LP. You can take a course, it's a free course, and learn how you can use Power Apps and then bring in some data and then even do some BI uh, uh, reports. Very interesting, it's very easy to follow. For more, you want to learn and practice many of the things that I told you today, you can go to aka.ms slash powerapps test environment, PA test environment, and you can go and provision a free sandbox and try all this uh, data and then practice it yourself uh, today. Thank you so much. Thanks to all our sponsors for making uh, today's event possible. And I'm pretty excited about low code and no code. So if you want to continue this conversation, please follow me at tncv.me or at Venkatrangan. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the conference. Thanks.